know it's poison, but it's already in you. Aren't you not gonna die now? It's too late to know. So you have to notice the signs of it. Oh, somebody was tampering with my stuff. Somebody, you know, the way they was acting, I don't like that. You know, and so because I had a low self-esteem, um, I think most people kind of, they kind of do have low, low, this part of you like, oh my gosh. They say, you have some nice hair. You know, I bought this for $54.99. You know, like that's low self-esteem. Because you just like, you should just be able to take the compliment. You know, and so when we do stuff like that, that's just a sign, of, okay, something's not going on. So you attract toxic people to you when you have that lower self-esteem. And now you keep saying, hey, um, Susie, uh, what do you think about this? And what do you, okay, you, okay, that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to do that. Everything is Susie, 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 Susie. And then something go wrong. Susie told you to do it. You didn't make your own decision. So now you're mad at Susie because you did not decide for yourself. Right? You didn't decide. You let Susie decide. Susie don't have no idea what you're talking about. She never in the situation. She swears she know everything. Just because Susie got a big mouth, she just you just listen. But you cannot. And then I read that 50% of people are toxic. That's a lot of people. But it's not, it's not all. You walk around, you start talking to people. People are, that's why I like them in Virginia, no shade, Philadelphia. But people will say, hi, how you doing? You know, you smile at them, they smile back at you. And in Philadelphia, they're like, you just keep walking. Don't you look at me, don't you, you know? Like, wow. I'm sure it's rougher in New York, but you know. <laughs> we don't talk to each other. We don't say hi, how you doing? Hi to your neighbor, you know, and then like I had a neighbor and my car was stuck and I was like, oh, I, I'm so used to having a big giant van, now I got a nice little small car. And they pushed me out. Just out of the kindness of their heart, they pushed me out and I was stuck. My husband was nowhere to be found. I got these kids in the car. I was so grateful. So I was like, the other day I was like, Hey, you guys, I'm so, I, I, you know, we don't talk to each other neighbors. We don't say hi all the time to every neighbor. But I just said, I like your new car. But to me, I was like, wait a minute. They got a new car, and they just pushed me out. Like, this is what happens. You're kind to people, and then kind things happen to you. And so they just were, like, impressed that I said hi to them and remembered. They said, oh, yeah, we did help you, you know? And that's credit to God. That's not me, you know? But this, this, this is the thing, like when you have positive people in your life, you're going to have those kind of experiences when toxic people are not going to allow that. They're not going to think, oh, let me do something nice for somebody. Let me tear them down. Let me talk about them. Let me talk about how long she talks. Let me talk about her clothes. Let me talk about this. Let me talk about that. Toxic people go there. But there's two things you can do with a toxic person. You can keep them at a distance. So you say, Ruth, what if I keep them at a distance and they still bother me? Right? It's still poison. So then you have to cut them off. Because you can ask any successful person, you're going to lose friends. If you want to get what God has for you, you're going to lose people in your life that are not on the same path. And it's not that they hate you, it's just that they can't see it for themselves. So they can't see it for you. They don't know you as that vicious, that go-getter, that, you know, taking charge, taking no prisoners type of person. They don't know you for who you could be. They too busy knowing you for your past. And you so busy trying to make your future happen today. Oh, but look, I did this, but look, I did that. It doesn't matter. They're always going to treat you like who you were in the past. And if they can't let that go, you got to let them go. Because they're talking to somebody different now on the phone. They're, talk, they're seeing somebody different when they look at you. They see you as the baby. They see you as the person that doesn't know what they're talking about. They see you. See, I, sometimes when you get in certain environments, you can feel very intimidated. Very intimidated because you feel like everybody knows and if you say something, they're gonna criticize you and judge you. But you gotta be able to be bold and say, you know what, I'm gonna say what I have to say. And y'all say something about it, I don't care. Because I learned that you can't control what other people say. So now it doesn't matter what you have to say. I'm going to say what I want to say because I want to give myself a check plus at the end of the day. That you said what you had to say. You expressed yourself. So we have to watch toxic people. Let me give you an example of toxic people. Now, as I'm, you, everybody has a pen, right? This is what I want you to do. On the side of that, I want you to, on that line, I want you to write down toxic person, okay? And you might have a couple. So when I say it, write that name down. Toxic people like to boast and they like to brag. Write it down. You know you got some people that be boasting and bragging. Come on. Everything they do is awesome. <laughs> And you do the same thing. Oh, yeah, I did that. Really? Now, if they're happy for you, then that's okay. But if they're boasting and they're bragging, but they can't do that for you, toxic.
or some you get some shade where they boast and brag about somebody else, but they have nothing good to say about you ever. Toxic people flatter you at first. Toxic people cannot admit that they're wrong. You know anybody that can't admit that they're wrong? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well. they be shocked. I'm like, well, you know, I don't know everything. When I say that to them, I just blow their mind. What you mean you don't know everything? I think I know everything. So they got to think about it. Like, wait a minute, do I think I know? You know, they just like, whoa, what she say here? Everybody act like they know what they talk about, right? <laughs> this is like, this is where we live, right? Toxic people, they disrespect you and they don't return your phone calls. You always got to call them. They don't want to call you. Well, keep on writing. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means they're toxic. I had somebody tell me before when I was about to open a daycare, oh, you don't, you should do it this way, you should do it that way. And I think on one of my videos, I, I just blurted out and I was like, if you depended on people, then you would do, you the, win, the thing you would accomplish your dream is never. Because that's what they want. When you want to go for your dream, there's always a criticism. Add that to the list. Toxic people refuse to deal with the issues. They don't want to talk about what they did wrong. They don't want to talk about what's really going on. They want to talk about Susie, Sally, Beth, and Shaboom Sheikah. They make you feel guilty once they've done you wrong. Anybody? No one talking about it? They wrong, and they like, no, I told you. I, I, you know, I told you that. Did you remember that? I told you. How are you going to argue with I told you that? No, you did not tell me that, but I told you. Don't tell me what I said. Toxic people expect you to come to them. They just expect it. They just they have this like a, a entitlement mentality, right? They, everything should be for them. They manipulate you. Have you ever been manipulated? Oh, yeah. I'ma tell her to come meet me at eight o'clock, but I really ain't gonna be here till eight thirty. But they're gonna be waiting on me, or I'ma call five people at the same time to come pick me up, or I'ma. You know, they always have something, some trick up there. I know how to get them to do it. Hold on. This is what you do. This is what you do. They always manipulate. And if they, you have to look, if they are doing it to somebody else, one day they will do it to you. You have to start looking at people on character. Not on last name. Not on friendship. Not on years. But on character. Because it's not until you hurting, broke, busted, disgusted, laying on the floor, will they do you wrong. And that's not the time to find out who's your friend. You got to make that decision. You gotta be able, if you, cause the thing about it is if you don't cut toxic people off, it becomes worse and worse and worse. And I'm sure when you were at your job, Fonty, that, Fancy, sorry, that you saw it get worse and worse and worse, didn't you? Until you finally did something about it. And that's what life is doing. If it's getting worse and worse and worse, you're like, well, we're gonna have to cut because I just can't take it. Like a broken door. Like a broken door. <laughs> yeah, the broken door. That's still my face. <laughs> they constantly criticize people or you they constantly criticize mostly your dreams right well you don't got the money to do that you can't do that I want to hear I can do it I don't want to hear that I can't do it you know why because I hear that anytime all the time my life tell me I can't do it my bank account tell me I can't do it my family tell me I can't do it I don't need that from you because these situations are optional. There's only one. Like, if you got a ring on your finger, that's the one that's mandatory. Everybody else is an option. When you get there, you're ready for success. You got to be like, I'm not playing with this thing no more. I don't have time to be your friend. I don't have time to people please. I don't have time to do that. God has something important for me to do, and I'm letting him down. When I don't step up and speak up and say what I got to say and cut people off that I have to cut off, delete. The signals that that person is toxic is that, that you're affected by their drama. Like they having a bad day, you're having a bad day. And you thought you were doing something good. I was there for my girlfriend, yes I was, and I helped her out in her hard situation, right? But then are they there for you though when you really need them though? For real, like they kind of lightweight help you out, right? They're not really going in like you. So when you are a better person to that person than they are to you, you got to step back and say, hold up. What am I getting out of this? If I'm not getting something out of this, not, I'm not saying you have to be selfish, because you're going to give, 
But you don't have to. You don't have to be tied down to somebody. Because then you, you got stuff to do. You got work to do. You got dreams. You got goals. Oh, I didn't call such and such person. I want them to be mad at me. What is that? That's not living. You didn't call me today. You didn't call me today. That's because I'm busy living. They make you feel exhausted. Have you ever, somebody ever called you and you just like, oh, I don't want to pick up the phone. I already know. Well, stop laughing too hard. <laughs> Write that name down. I'm not going to make you say any names. You don't have to worry. Toxic people, they always, this, this is the cycle of you saving them all the time. Or they don't want to come to your house. You got to always come to their house. You know, just stupid little things, but it all adds up at the end of the day. Because there's a mentality back there like, you won't come to me. You When that person's really toxic, they're toxic. Now there's three kinds of people. Let me learn about three kinds of apples. Never mind. Rotten apples, that person's bad and you know it. It's obvious. When you meet somebody like, oh, she was so rude, I'll never be her friend, right? Or, she's funny, I'm going to hang out with her. Some people like rotten apples, I don't know why. You know, Haitian people, man, they'll cut some parts of the rotten part out and just eat the apple. That's real tough. I'm just saying. I ain't going to throw this out, right? That's what we do with our friends, though. I ain't going to throw you out. I'm not going to throw you out. I'm just cutting, I'm going to slice that up. Just don't disrespect me. Just don't, you know, cheat on me, boyfriend. You know, just, just don't do that to me. They ain't calling me a B, I'm just saying, call them up. You cut it out. But then that thing grows back like a fungus. Mm -hmm. The second kind of apple is the green apple. The green apple, you're waiting for it to go rotten or you're waiting for it to go red, which is right. You don't know. Some people, they like mm, a little shady sometimes. You don't really kind of know if they're rotten yet. You just wait. Time will tell. So I want you to put them on the list, right? And I want you to keep on a distance because we learned something called boundaries. And when you say no, I want you to start saying no because when you say no and that person comes across the line again, they don't respect you because your no should be no. It should be, oh, okay. You say you can't make it as far as so I'm not going to hold it against you and just like, I'm going to kill her when she sleeps. No, you know? You can say no and people can still respect you. So now you turn into a people pleaser because you said no. Now you're the worst person in the world because you said no. But that's for boundaries. They have to respect that. But guess what? When you ask them to do something, they have their boundaries right in check. Well, I'm preaching, ain't I? All right, let's move on. Number three, red apple. These are the positive people. The people that uplift. I hope I'm a red apple. No. <laughs> the positive people. They always have something good to say, and they can always say that, see the good in it. And then I want to ask you, what kind of apple are you? What kind of apple are you? Are you green? You don't know which one you are. Some days good, some days are nasty, right? Are you positive? Like, or, or are you, because I'm a very positive person, but I'm real. Like, I'm negative in my mind. I'm an honest person. I'm negative. Why? I'm not negative towards you. I'm negative and critical towards myself. Mostly. Oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You didn't have that together, you didn't have that together. Don't we tear ourselves down a lot? Being hard on yourself. Right. Hard on yourself. And then sometimes when you're hard on yourself, then you're like, well, I'm going to be hard on you too. The people close to you, you're hard on them. You're critical with them. You ever wonder why, like, how come I can treat all my friends real nice and then the ones that live in my house, I can't treat them nice? This is, that's the situation. Well, not my situation, but I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. But you have to understand that you have to be a positive all the time. It's not like, Oh, pie in the sky, that's weak. Don't do that. No. You have to, if you want a positive result, because your mind, your thoughts affect your actions. Why? Because they affect your attitude and your behavior. If you have a bad attitude, who's going to do something positive? You're not going to do nothing towards your dream that day. You're going to say that day's chalk. But if you have a positive attitude, you know what? That was my morning. That is not my afternoon. I took a nap. I'm going to change it all up now, right? <laughs> For those of us who can take a nap in the daytime, I'm gonna take a nap and I'm gonna be better when I wake up. You know how many times I quit today here? Every night. Because I heard something that you can quit at night, but in the morning you better get up and, and be there, right? I had to quit. I'm like, I'm done. I can't just take your kids. Stand it. Mm. But then I saw the beauty of when you're having a tough day, you have your family to go home to. And they can bring you joy. Sometimes they can bring you a mess and a lot of noise, but they can bring you joy, right? So you have to know how to handle toxic people. Number one, you can establish boundaries, okay? So when you go to number two, and it says boundaries keep you, you're gonna put boundaries keep you safe. 
when our sheet says, boundaries keep you a negative two, a number two, toxic people. And it keeps negative people out. They keep you safe, and they keep negative people out. So a boundary is like serves as a shield. You're not gonna come and invade my space. You, got, you mad at me for what I'm doing? That's your problem. That's my new saying. That's your problem. Check for the braces. I'm about to get them. For real. That's your problem. I'm really going to have to look at that every day. Because everybody always has a problem with what you're doing. But it does not affect you. Or they always want something for you. And you say no, they get mad. That's your problem. Why is it my problem? It sounds so selfish, but it is the self-preservation. Because you cannot allow somebody's bad attitude to dominate your day. It keeps the negative people out when you say, I will not pick up your phone call after 6 o'clock. That's the bit time for me and my family. If you don't respect that, then you don't need to be in my life. Period. Or whatever else you want to do. Oh, I will be doing my work. I will be working from 3 to 12. And anybody have a problem with that and they get mad. I used to hate it. I used to be at the daycare. People think they can call me all the time. Do you know I'm working? And do you know when you at your job, you have... This is my coworker, that's my coworker. I was all the coworkers. So why do you think you can call me anytime? And I have to pick up the phone. You didn't respect my boundaries. You didn't respect that I was working. Yeah, sometimes I did call you, but you gotta understand, you can't call me though. I call you, you can't call me. That's a boundary. I'm at work, you gotta respect that. Some people, if you're not doing a job that they want you to do, they're not gonna respect the business that you're trying to build. But the business is for them though. The business is for your family, so that can be all right. So they can grow, so they can have more. You, we're doing extra stuff, why? Because we want to be more. We don't want to stay at the same level. And then everybody's so happy, well, I got a job, I got a paycheck, I got a house. But then why, you, you don't have a smile on your face. You're not living your dreams for real. You just maintain it. But we're building, we're trying to go up higher. When you're going up higher, people will assassinate you. They will attack you. And those are the toxic people I'm talking about. They're going to be strangers. And some of them, this is what I'm finding out right now, they're going to be your friends and your family. It ain't nothing like when your friends and your family hurt you. And then there's another one. After you keep going and you're helping other people, when somebody you help turn and stab you in the back. Now you know. I'm like, well, you know it hurts, but I'm going somewhere. You know? I got my stab. Boom. Let's go. Because you got to know that all of that hurt is bringing you somewhere. All of that hurt is bringing you somewhere. So write down how they make you feel on a slip of paper. Anybody need paper? How do, how do toxic people make you feel? Just write it down. Let me see if I have extra papers for you. Hold on. There we go. Uh -huh. You thought I was not prepared, but I can figure. <laughs> I'm sure you have more than one toxic person, so go ahead. I'll give you a minute. We have to move on. We're about to go on break in a few minutes. Okay, so I want you to take that piece of paper. Look at what they, look, how that person makes you feel. What that person does to you. So what I have done, and when you, you can do this at home. Write a letter about everything that person has done to you that hurt you. You still heard about this stuff. Not stuff that you forgave for. Stuff you still heard about, right? And I want you to take that piece of paper, write the whole letter out, and I don't want you to give it to anybody. I want you to ball it up, rip it up, 
do what you have to do. So if you want to rip up your card now, you can rip it up. If you want to wait till you get home, that's fine. But just rip it up. It's like, as a symbol, I'm done dealing with toxic people. You're never going to get nowhere. They're stealing your dreams from you. They're stealing your life from you. I can give you all the success principles I've learned. But what I've learned is that even though I had the principles, I still had the toxic people in my life. Kept stealing what I learned away. You know when you go to church and they say, you know, they, you stole the seed, but then the vultures came and stole it? They take the seed away from you? If you don't get rid of the vultures, I don't have to teach you nothing. Because it's all for nothing. You got to get rid of those people. So let's talk about toxic environments. She was at a toxic environment in her job. And she had to walk away. How do you deal with that? Well, one way I dealt with it was um, a bunch of sticky notes. And I would put little quotes and stuff. The people at the bank thought I was crazy. One day you'll be out of here. You know, I wrote all that stuff on there. They were like, oh, what you trying to say to Don't come in my cubicle. That's none of your business. I had positive quotes to lift me up. You know, like commitment is doing the thing you said you would do long after the feeling has left you. I take the, the, the quote and I say, I want to live by this. It's not just something nice to say. I want to live by this. So now, from now on, if I make a commitment, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do it. Because everything I do is helping me to grow into a bigger and better person. That's why it really don't matter what you do right now. It just matters that you do something, right? Something that you want to do, preferably. But if you do something and you grow, because there's going to be other opportunities. I was at, first job, what was it? Um, oh, hair salon. Good one. Toxic environment. You know how to, come on, you know the hair salon. Oh, let me tell you what that baby daddy did and all that stuff. One day they thought they was going to tell me about my relationship and how he was so much older than me and that he's going to be out in the bar, I'm going to be outside the bar. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? This is ridiculous. So in my, I learned how to be in the salon, but like I learned that it could be a toxic environment, so I had to watch it. So that was lesson number one. Don't work anywhere where it's toxic. Because now you're messing with the inside of me. I don't care what you do to the outside. Now you're messing with the inside of me. I start thinking like you because I have to hear you talk, talk, talk all day. I'm going to start acting like that. That's why I say watch what you listen to, watch what you hear, you know, watch what you watch. Because that stuff's come inside of you, and now you get angry. What am I mad for? I'm not arguing, but they threw a drink, and they was, you know, fighting, and I was watching that. So now I'm do that too, right? And it's your subconscious. It's not really, like, you know it don't make sense to do that. But then it won't, you'll feel more comfortable cursing somebody out because you saw it. Like, that's how people handle their problems. So in your mind, you're teaching your mind the wrong thing. So I went from, you know, all these different environments where I was, you know, persecuted and, and girls try to fight me. My husband almost ran a couple girls over many times. <laughs> Ready to fight me for what? What am I going to say to them or do to them, you know? I did have a problem when I was in the middle school. Um, if you mess with me too much, I might, I might call you out your name. And then we had to fight. But I didn't get it until one day I was like, saying, going through all the fights. I'm like, why do I fight like three times a year, every year? Why do these girls don't like me? Then I had to look at me. When I started looking at me, I was like, oh, that's what I did. Oh, your name doesn't start with a B. Okay, I got it. I got it, right? I'm done. My bad. You, you let them push you. You didn't speak up. And then I blow up, right? Yeah. And then we fight. So I said, I'm not going to do that no more. I know better now. But you got to go inside of yourself. You got to be able to, to detach yourself from the situation and take a walk sometimes. I mean, I'm not saying quit every job because there's some learned lessons I had to learn. Sometimes you're in a job and you can't leave your job because somebody's depending on you, right? So the girl, I'm in another hair salon. I don't know what's up with me in these hair salons. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm not with black ladies and stuff like that. I ain't got no problems, please. I'm not with younger girls. I ain't got no problems, please. Older women, oh. They were, they were as just as bad as the other women. So this girl, she's like Brazilian. She's like, da -da 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 -da. not Brazilian. She was Spanish. She was speaking Spanish. But see, we Haitian. So we know a little bit of what you're talking about when you're speaking Spanish. So you ain't talking until somebody got in my seat. And I know you're talking about me like a dog. And I know you know that I need help. But you're talking about me, right? So this kept going on and on and on. Finally, I was like, I'm going to even quit. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I know I need to stay here. So I was like, I, you know, my husband's like, you don't got to stay nowhere, right? And I'm like, no, but this time I don't want to quit. I'm tired of quitting. I'm tired of running. 
right? So I got them to move my chair. And then after that, everything was okay. So you have to find out how to pull yourself out of an environment, you know, and like be really smart about it. Don't put yourself in the, that's what they want. You would, let, you would have loved that. And we ended up being cool at the end. So I was like, I'm so proud of you. I did not quit a job. I had 35 jobs in my life too. You said what? 35. 35 jobs. Yes. You're a real hustler. Well, I didn't have 35 jobs at the same time. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. But I learned that I cannot control what other people say or what they think. I just have to let it be. I was in hair school and the girls talked about me all day. And I'm just like, I gotta take it. I just have to. That's when I got over the part where fighting is not an option anymore. I just had to take it. I was just like, okay, it'll be over soon. Because them girls, they would have stole my out. Like, I only had one chance to go to hair school for free. I'm gonna take that. I get to get out of high school and y'all pay for me to go, I'm gonna take that. But then I had, there's always gonna be something bothering you. Success is not gonna be easy, it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be probably one of the hardest things you ever have to do, but all you have to do is endure. I had to wait my two and a half years and I was out. I had to worry about them talking no more. I'm pretty sure that girl never got her license that talked about me like that. But I got my hours and I took my test before my hours expired. And now I have something for a lifetime and temporarily I was about to quit. I was about to be, I don't gotta take this. I go regular school, I don't care. I switched to culinary arts or something, but I wouldn't have finished what I started, which we said success was. So for me, that was success, to finish what I started. You can't control what other people are going to say, but another thing I learned is, what can I learn from this job? What can I learn from this situation? If I'm stuck at home, how can I be the best mother? Okay, I'm not gonna say stuck at home. Some people want to be home, I like being home. But how can I be the best mother and house cleaner? House cleaner, right? <laughs> I don't want to clean the house. And then you clean it and then they're dirty and dirty and dirty. Oh my God, I can't take it. Because I'm the kind of person, I don't like to maintain, I like to build. So I'm like, let somebody else maintain it. Now I have to keep doing the same thing over and over. You can feel sometimes like you have no purpose because you feel like you're doing something that's going to be undone. And that doesn't feel good all the time. When you're doing something that has to be undone, that, that will be undone, you feel like, this, I have to keep doing this, what am I made? You just start thinking negatively. But you have to say, you know what, let me endure this. You know, a lot of times I was just like, you know what, I need to mop the floor. And it got so bad that I was like, I love mopping the floor, just anything, so I had to wash them. You know, I worked at a daycare and um, this girl was like, um, she was supposed to be the teacher, but she got the job a week before me. And so they gave her the job. She was not qualified. So she left me with the kids all the time. And she wanted to go staple little envelopes and did all this stuff. And she just wanted to get out of it. So somebody running to go explain, that's mean that they don't want my kids. Sorry. That's the truth. So they, she went and did something else. And two weeks later, she quit her job. She's like, well, she's a teacher anyway. People don't want to do what they have to do, which is why I had a quote on Facebook. I said, um, everybody want to be a boss, but nobody wants to clean the toilet. Think about that. Nobody want to clean the toilet. They just, that's beneath me. That is beneath me. Right? But when you have to clean your house up and you got to get your stuff in order, you feel like a, like humility. Like being a, in control sometimes can make you feel like you're better than people. So you have to be brought back down. So when you're doing, just remember to, to, to do for others. That's why you serve because it reminds you that somebody else needs something and that's more important than what you want. I know we think that what we want is so important, but no, we can't. So we have th toxic thoughts. This is my last topic for this session. Toxic thoughts. I want you to rip out, I am a champion. I mean, I, I am a victim, right? We act like victims. I can't believe they did that to me. Why would they do that? Why would my, my teacher don't like me. Oh gosh, I hate that one. My teacher don't like me. My boss don't like me. My manager don't like me. And I want you to replace it with, I am a champion. Can y'all say that with me? I am a champion. I am a champion. So every time your mind says, I am a victim, I want you to walk over to the mirror and say, I'm a champion. I'm a witness. Period. Because a lot of times we do it to ourselves. I had eight papers to write in one day because I did it to myself. So how am I going to say my teacher don't like me? The syllabus was right there when I signed up for the class. I was there to pick up the check, sign the check, cast the check out. Now I don't want to do the work, right? Yes. 
Tell the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So how my teacher don't like me? If I failed it, then it's my fault. But I'm a champion. So let me tell you about this. One time I had to, to write like three papers or something. And then I, I spent all night, I did it. Or no, it was like I quit, right? And then because I quit, I had to repeat the class over. So I did all that eight weeks for nothing. But then the second time I was like, I heard, I had my motivational speaker, he was like, don't quit, go to the end of the class, go to the end of the class. I was like, all right, it's the last day of class. <laughs> and now I have eight papers to do, all right? And now I have to preach and I have to do all this other stuff. I have to be a mother, I have to be all that. All of a sudden, somebody want to watch my kids. I never want to watch my kids. All of a sudden, things start coming together. And I was like, all right, fine, God, I'm going to believe you for these eight papers. I just kept saying, I'm going to believe you, I'm going to believe you. I couldn't do it in eight weeks. I did it all in one night. Ridiculous, right? Wow. Because I said I'm a champion. I was like, oh, did I say yes? No. Okay, type your paper, type your paper. Okay, take a nap. I was just like, military, uh, let's get it done. I was a day late, but I put everything in. I almost quit school over that. My MBA, like, I was about to be done. I was like, I, I can't take it. I just said, I can't. When I was thinking like a victim, I said, I can't do this. This is too much. No person in their right mind is going to try to do eight papers in one day. But when you think you're a champion, I'm like, maybe God's like, maybe God likes champions or something, right? Because he's like, when you have that faith, that's what faith says. I'm a champion. I'm going to win no matter what. You set yourself up to win, but God's always going to pull you out. If you decide that I'm a champion, if you say I'm a victim, the devil made me do it, I can't do nothing, I'm, I'm a loser, then you're going to lose. When you say, this is a toxic thought, y'all, I can change him. I can change her. Mm -hmm. That's toxic. Why? Because you can only change yourself. You can't change anybody. Tell your neighbor you can't change anybody. Can't change How many people can change themselves? It's, you can do it? I can't. I know this is hard. <laughs> You, you can only change yourself, but don't you realize how hard it is to change yourself? It's like almost difficult, right? But you can do it. So you can say, I can only change myself. And so if you were over here changing yourself, how do you have time to find out what other people are doing and try to change them? That's ridiculous. They are who they are. Believe them and move on. You can Sometimes we say, why does it have to be like this? Toxic. This is going to kill you in your dreams. Why does it have to? No, I say toxic, right? But it's true. It's proven that if you're in a hospital and you have these negative thoughts, that's why people don't like to leave people alone in the hospital. Because if you think you're negative, you're going to die. I'm never going to get better. I'm never going to get better. They had a, a, a study where they, they, let the, they told the guy they're going to cut him in his leg, right? And the, 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 um, the blood is going to drip. And he, he uh, you know, they checked him at night. It was really water. Do you know he died? Because he thought it was his own blood. He thought, I'm never going to make out of, make it out of this alive. So he died. The next day, healthy person. So when I say it's toxic, please believe me, it's toxic. When you, when you hear, why do I have, why does it have to be like this? Just say, I will go with the flow. Say that, I will go with the flow. Go with the flow. When I can't control the situation. When I can't control the situation. Go with the flow. See how it turns out before you say, I can't, I can't stand this. I don't know. Because sometimes bad things happen, but it's for your good. It makes it easier for you. You know how many people how many times people call an inspector on me? I ain't even have no daycare. They're like, yep, she got a million kids in there. It's a house. I got a billion kids. You know, I was like, you know what? You go, you go ahead. Come on in, inspector. All right, that's fine. I talked to the inspector. They gave me pointers on how to open the business. Because I was in the process of getting the license. So I don't worry about if something bad is coming my way. I said, how can I use this for my advantage? And that's what I want you to do. And don't tell yourself the grass is greener on the other side. If I was rich. If I was skinny. If I was prettier. I want you to say, my grass is green enough. Greener. And it's getting, greener, it's getting greener every day. Every day. I'm good. Everything I do is, is great. It's going to be fine. I don't want to be anybody else. I just want to be me. I like my gifts. I like my talents. I like what I've gotten to know. And I'm going to be better. And even if I don't have it all together, it's okay. But I'm not going to be like, oh, I wish I was them. I wish I had that money. I wish I did this. I wish I did that. Don't we live like that? We see something on TV and say, oh, why can't I have that? 
But you don't know what that person is struggling with. You don't know what that person is going through. And you don't know what they had to give up. You ever see somebody like they about to make it and then somebody they really, really care about just dies? Do you want to do that to yourself? So why would you say you want that? Walk your own path. Go your own way. Here's another toxic thought. You are facing somebody that you love or you care about. I expected you to do that. I expect you to be this and I expect you to be that. You should have picked me up more time. Right? But then that's unappreciated. You're like, you don't appreciate that person who came out their way to pick you up. You can't control them. I expected you to be there for me. I expected you. No, I'm going to let you make your mistakes. So I want you to say, do you, do you, and I'll do me. Then let them act a fool. Let them act crazy. Who cares? That's not your problem. You run, you run your own race. You do your own thing. Don't worry about what they're doing on the side because this is success, right? And you over here like, well, what's going on with you? You're supposed to be on your own way. You're getting off your path. Don't say, I'm right and I'll prove it. Right? Because when you're in an argument with somebody else, that's toxic because you're like, I'm going to prove that I'm right. I'm going to prove it. I'm, it's me. I'm right. I'm the winner, right? But what if you love that person? And, and, and being right destroys the relationship. So you have to say in your mind, you know what? If you're right and that's going to make you happy, I'll let you be. What will people think about me? You can't worry about what people think about me. So remember we said, that's your problem. I'm going to say, that's your problem. I don't care what you think. It don't matter. You're not going to write my checks. You're not going to do nothing for me. I don't care what you have to say. Even if you write my checks today, I'll be writing my checks tomorrow. So it really doesn't matter what you have to say. Worried about the few. I was a worrier. I had to go look on YouTube how to stop worrying because it was so bad. Not knowing how you, no, I said my bills were paid every month. I didn't tell you that I had to borrow money sometimes. I didn't tell you that it, I didn't know how I was going to make it sometimes. I didn't tell you that part. I was worried. But I had to decide today it ain't due today, is it? All right, well, am I still here? Am I still alive, right? We got to take life one day at a time, one hour at a time. Deal with what you have because when you get more responsibility and more responsibility, you feel like it gets to be too much. You feel overwhelmed. And sometimes we think having money is everything, right? When I have money, it'll be all good. But just to go back to worrying, I didn't tell you how to deal with it. Deal with the present. Deal with today. Deal with right now. I'm going to be in the present. I'm going to worry about today. Forget five years from now, I'm going to worry about today. Because if I do everything that I'm supposed to do today, then I'll get there five years. I learned a long time ago, if you want to do something, I can tell you where you're going to be in five years by what you do all day now. Because that's what you're going to do. If you're not doing nothing, you ain't going to do nothing in five years. Why do you think something's going to change? Because five years went by. It's old to me. No. If you're not writing, you're not going to have, you're not going to be an author. If you're not singing, you're not going to be a singer. If you're not doing your homework, you're not going to graduate. If you're not working, you won't have a job. <laughs> But I can tell you what you do with your habits today, that's going to, so now, here's the trick. When you want to be successful, you have to design your life. Design your day. I have a schedule to follow, and I have to make sure I schedule my, this is my dream for this, my dream for that. I got to do something about it today. What am I going to do that's going to be enough for me to, because you can't, like, okay, I'm going to sing now. And I'm going to sing, it takes you 10,000 hours to master something. I'm going to sing straight 10,000 hours and I'm going to be the best in the world. No, it doesn't work like that. You do a little by little by little. Success is doing little things every single day. You have to be consistent and you have to work and then you'll get it. So I want you to use affirmations in the mirror. I want you to talk to yourself every day. And that you have to help yourself out. You have to find it in your heart. And then I always listen to motivational speakers. I remember being in a daycare and I had to just turn the computer on one day because I was sitting there by myself and I had to say, like, and he, the guy really struck a chord with me. He was like, you know, he, he was basically like, you can do this. Just break it down, do this, do that. And all of a sudden, something new happened. I was like, oh my gosh, I have a plan. I'm going to just do one thing at a time. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do what I got to do. I 
felt like something totally different happened because I kept putting positive things in my mind. Now, you saved, right? Everybody saved? No? All right, we saved. So what does the Bible think? So is this all? This is just Ruth talking about the side of her head, right? The Bible says in Matthew 7, verse 3 through 5, take the plank out of your own eye, right? We're talking about toxic people. They got to take their, they got to do their own stuff before they come and judge me. That's what they do. They judge and they criticize. So you got to deal with that. So you need to go in prayer and counseling. And you got to ask yourself first, why are you running on the phone and calling such and such when you didn't even talk to God about it? You didn't even look in yourself to talk about it. That's why you got to be careful. When you got the good news, you're running. And then when you get the bad news, you're running too to tell them. So you got to be like, okay, what does this mean? Let me take it. You know how people say, all right, I'll take it all in. You got to take it all in. What does this mean for me? And pray for wisdom. You know, take action in a loving way against these people. Like, they're, they're coming against you, but you can talk to them and say, you know what, this is what God told me to say to you. I'm going to say exactly what God said. You go off and you can burn a whole building up. Watching the house, what was the housewives? The house husband of Hollywood. Oh, yeah. She was like, she put that so well. <laughs> Y'all watching? I don't watch for three minutes. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> what was funny, it was like, he tried to play his ex-wife or something and just, a, a movie role or something, and she was like, yeah, it's a fake movie. So she found out it's a fake movie, so he, she, she's like, okay, that's nice, you know. Guys, the fruit is away. And she walks away like, okay, bye, guys. He's like, oh, she took that really well. Well, she got outside, boom, the whole car lit on fire. I was like, wow, wow, don't be like that, okay? <laughs> just because you're like, you did this to me, you did that to me. Go ahead, just calm down and, and deal with the toxic people in a civilized manner, all right? So that's it for this session.